So church family, today we are not, we cannot, it's not possible for us to be in the book of Romans. It would be wrong. And you'll see why today. There's too much happening in the world right now that I got to tell you, I've got my pulse on so many sources and I'm overwhelmed. In one week, I decided from going from uh, Romans to having to do this just because of the volume of things that are happening in the world around us that you as a believer must know. Because it all leads into you and I walking more boldly and more educated and more ready to not only share Christ, but to meet the Lord Jesus. And so we're looking today at a study that is titled, When You See These Things, over and over again, Jesus Christ himself said, when you see these things, and then he began to fill in the blanks. Many of you might remember those days when we were watching Listen now, either ABC, CBS, or NBC. That's all the choices you had. When all of a sudden on the screen, remember, it'd get kind of staticky or go blank, and then popping up on the screen would be this. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this special report. Anybody remember that? Raise your hand. Encourage me, please, that I'm not the only... Okay, there you are. And so um, let me tell you something, everybody, especially, especially those of you who are young, you'll have a hard time imagining this. That didn't happen very often, did it, church? When you saw your program interrupted and it said, we interrupt this program or this broadcast to bring you this special report, something big was going to be announced. And it's, it, you stopped dead in your tracks. At least that's the home we were brought up in, is... What's this? Something's big. And some of those things, by the way, I'm going to mention them to you in a moment. And for me, for you, they have forever, almost as it were in time and memorial, put a stamp in our brain where we can remember what we were wearing, where we were at, the weather, so many things. For example, now granted, this goes back in time, but I remember my mom coming to my school crying. She had a red blouse or shirt on. And I just remember being greeted by my mom because back in those days, I don't know how it is now, but the parents went and picked up the kids from school. And my mom was crying and that shook me. And what I heard from my mom was that they've just killed the president. They've just killed the president. The president's been killed. And that was November 22nd, 1963, Dallas, Texas. Do you remember that? JFK was shot dead. What about this day? We'll see if you get it. July 20th, 1969, I stood in the front yard with my dad and my brother. And my dad had us look up and he said, you see that? He pointed to the moon. He said, there's a man stepping out onto the moon right now. And when you're as young as I was, I didn't care. <laughs> but I grew up to care. I grew up to learn how big of a deal that was. What about this for some of us locally? I'll never forget it. It was like yesterday, February 9th, literally six a.m. and one second. 6 a.m. in the morning and one second. Silmar. That's right. Silmar, February 9th, 1971. SoCal was struck with a major earthquake and parts of Los Angeles fell down. And we were shaken so much. It was incredible. They closed school down for four weeks in Orange County because of the tremors. And you'll never forget that day. I remember running down the hallway to my parents' bedroom and the hallway was moving, and I remember literally crashing into one of the walls because the hallway was going like this. It's hard to run down a hallway when it's, when it's moving like that. It's absolutely remarkable. This was a day that I can remember where I was standing, what I was wearing, what I was doing. January 28th, 1986, right in the middle of the week, exactly, the Challenger shuttle blew up and our astronauts were lost. None of us will forget that incredibly beautiful. It seemed as though the entire United States had perfectly clear weather 
on this particular day, it was a Tuesday, and I remember waking up, and uh, for some reason I had that day off, and I had my coffee, and I turned on the TV, and that was Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, and I, I stood there, and I watched my nation change in a moment's time forever. And the days and the months and the years that followed, Jesus said, when you see these things, and this week, remarkably, I was interviewed by a certain media group in New York City, and they asked me this question, what or why does it seem that there is so much evil going on in our nation and in our world in these days? Can you believe that? A secular organization asking a question of a pastor, why is there so much evil and what in the world's happening? That's an indicator of the days and the age in which you and I live in, church. And if you're sensing that something is stirring below the surface, as it were, I wanted to I wanted to say sensing that something's wrong. I don't want to say that as a believer. I don't think that's right. If we think, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's happening? Listen, everything is falling right into place according to God's calendar. And the only way that you and I are going to understand it is if we understand God's word. The world doesn't know that. They're starting to freak. And if you were not a Christian, you'd be doing what other Christians are doing today. Either trying to figure it out or get drunk. The Bible says, Jesus said that the days will be coming upon this earth, that it will be so chaotic that men's hearts will fail them. Men will have heart attacks when they see the things coming upon the earth. In John 14, 29, Jesus said, and now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. So church family, you're here today on this Sunday morning and you're, you're being refueled. Think of it for a moment. You're a fighter jet coming up in midair and you're going to be refueled by a, a KC-135 or whatever. You're going to be getting fuel so that you can peel off and go back into the world this week and have everything that you need to tell the world why they ought to put their hope in Jesus. The Bible says these days that you and I are experiencing are days that should lead you and I to believe because Jesus said they would come in advance. That's awesome. The Bible has an urgent message to every Christian of every generation. It never changes for the last 2,000 years. And that is that we are to be faithful, we are to be watching, and we are to be ready for Christ's return. So I am not kidding when I told you there's just too much going on. These are some things that were selected, and we could pick any one of these items and we can tie them to Bible prophecy. I'm not saying that these issues on the list right now are Bible prophecies fulfilled. You hear me, everybody. I'm not saying that these are Bible prophecies being fulfilled. I'm saying that every one of these topics the Bible speaks to regarding the last days. Did you, did you get that? Here's page two. We're talking, a, we're talking a week and a half here, mostly a week. Look at this. Things taking place in our world around us today. Remarkable. So church family, I'm going to have you stand up if you would. We're going to do something rare, but we've done it before in the past. And that is, we are going to read from a montage of scriptures that have been collected or compiled. Are you guys okay? You're already quiet. Don't be quiet on me. I'm all pumped up about today. Okay. My... I have asked the Lord in prayer, can you come during first service? Lord, how about that? Pick us up. Pick us up. So I'm going to read the odd-numbered verses, if you'll join together in the even-numbered verses. Again, this is a montage of scriptures compiled together regarding our theme, when you see these things. So the scriptures tell us here, speak to us here, therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour. You do not expect, but of that day and hour, no, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave. 
be strong, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Take heed, watch and pray, for we do not know when the time is. It is like a man looking for his sunshine, and watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. But take heed to yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That was, uh, you guys do 14. We'll fix that at second service. Verse 14, sorry, wait, wait, wait. On a count of three, do 14. One, two, three, go. Let us be Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Father, yeah. Father, we pray that this time invested in your word would cause us today to be a transformed people. Change our minds. We are here and we confess proudly. Lord, brainwash us. Soul wash us. Spirit wash us. Lord, fill us now, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said... Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You picked up on it. You saw and you heard that word watch or watching numerous times. In the Greek New Testament, the word appears in three different forms. In English, it's the word watch. But in the Greek language, we see in three manifestations of that word. And listen now. It is used, number one, this way, to keep awake, literally or figuratively, to be in a state of, I love this word, vigilance, being watchful, on the alert, keep the watch, or to be on guard, as it were, as we'll hear in a moment. The second usage of that word is to not only keep awake, but it means to set a guard, to continue the watch, on the guard to be, or in a place of the guardian, one who has his Post, faithfully maintain, uh, to be keeping your eyes open and on the horizon. That's how the believers to be living. We're to be awake and we're to be on guard, looking at the horizon for things to come. And the third usage of the word watch in the Greek language is to be sleepless, wakeful. It's talking spiritually now. It doesn't mean you stay up all night. 
Be on the alert. Keep on the alert. Keep watching. The word implies custody or to observe or most importantly, to persevere, to stay at it, to not give up. More than ever before, the church in America, for that, the world, the church needs to be at her post, fully awake, ready to receive the coming of the Lord Jesus, and in the meantime, be busy about our Father's business. That one definition for that word, multiplied in three different ways, is summed up in this, always be waiting. We are to be watching so that we are waiting. And let me tell you something right now. If you are watching and waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, your walk, your spiritual walk will shape up real quick. You know how we all need to get into shape, most of us, me and you and most, most of us? We need to get into shape. But when you get into shape, you feel better. When you get into shape, things that otherwise set you back, they don't set you back. And so we want to talk about in this message today, being spiritually fit. I'm going to run through quite a bit today, so I'm going to ask you to take some notes. Before we do that, here's some passages. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. Jesus died once, friends. That's all he needed to do was to die once. To those who eagerly wait for him, are you? He will appear a second time. This is a serious verse. Apart from sin for salvation. Let me talk about this for a second. This verse, to me, culminates and puts a bow on the top of the believer's life. Understand this. Jesus Christ died on the cross once and he'll never have to die again. His salvation for you is all you need. Number two. Are you, we must be, eagerly waiting for him to come again. I don't care who says what. Don't give me the after service when you come up to me, boy, this famous pastor says that this is God. I don't care who says what. The Bible says we are to be eagerly waiting for his return. That is epic. Watch out for people who say, oh, I don't think the Lord could come back. I told you before, take a selfie with them and then post that you just met somebody who fulfilled Bible prophecy. Because this guy just told me Jesus delays his return. That's exactly what the Bible warned us about in the last days, to watch out for people who say, I don't think the Lord can come back now. Watch out. Why is that important? He will appear. Hey, guess what? The Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, could have used the word, he will come. But he didn't use that word. You want to know why? Because an appearing is different than a coming. When Christ comes, he stays. The first coming and second coming is a coming. But the rapture of the church is an appearing. And he's going to appear to those who are looking for him. You say, well, well, what if somebody's not looking for that? I'm telling you this right now. A believer is going to have in his theology, in her theology, the coming of the Lord Jesus could be at any time. Even if they're backslidden, they know he could come at any time. It's always great to see a backslidden Christian biting their fingernails down to the quick. They're panicking and terrorized about everything. Why? Because they're living outside the will of God. They're a child of heaven, but they're not walking with him, so they're miserable. They're not ready. And the Bible says to the believer that when he comes, you're not left behind. The believer is raptured, but the Bible says don't be goofing around when he comes, because when he comes, you don't want to be ashamed at his appearing. Can you imagine if Christ came today and you're not ready, but you're a believer and you'll be going up going, oh, shucks. Oh, boy. Oh, yay, yay. No, only unbelievers will be left behind. And he will appear apart from sin for salvation, meaning the issue of salvation has been taken care of. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. For we wait for his son from heaven. And again, I must ask myself, am I, are you, waiting? Whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Circle the word wrath. The wrath is the vengeance of God, the indignation of God. And there's only one time recorded in Bible history, in Bible prophecy, that God's wrath is described as 
his indignation poured out on earth to all those who do not believe. It's called the seven-year tribulation period. God has promised us. Write that down. Argue that. Search and see. First Thessalonians 1.10. God has promised to deliver you from his wrath that's coming upon the earth. For the true believer, this is an exciting time in which you and I live in, to say the least. Don't you feel like sometimes, maybe it's my age, I guess so, or maybe it's all of the above. I happen to be at this age, at this time in human life, by the way, at the predetermined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you and I live at this moment. You understand that? You're not like a mistake. I think I was born at the wrong time. I often thought, I used to think that a lot. I, I wanted to be born about 260 years ago, 270 years ago. I wanted to be part of the colonial revolutionary period. I mean, I, that, but then I have to settle for the fact that God had me be born here now. But then why is that spirit within me? Because maybe he wants to do something. You're here right now. You're a believer at this time for such a time as this. But are we not, can we not all agree that we're longing to go home to a home that we've never been to before? Yes. Are you thinking more about heaven now than ever before? Yes. I am. By the way, to think about heaven more now than ever before doesn't mean you go sit on your couch and wait for it to come. I have found out that it's energizing me more now than ever before. Because I could go to heaven at any time. Let's shake up the kingdom of hell. Let's cause some trouble among the forces of darkness and evil. The Bible says in Corinthians to the church, Paul wrote, I believe it's first or second Corinthians 10 verse six, that by our obedience to Christ, we punish disobedience. Wow. Evil should shudder and shake when you worship God and when you shine your light. Philippians chapter three, verse 20. This is all introduction, so write small. Philippians 3.20 says, for our citizenship is in heaven, <laughs> from which we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So church, are you eagerly waiting? That would mean that you're watching. That would mean that you're ready to meet him. 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning at verse 1. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Look, that's enough right there. I can say, I can say God bless. Thanks for coming. Have a nice day. <laughs> if you think about it. That verse right there, look at that. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day, what day, when he comes, will not overtake you as a thief. Did you see that? You know, Jesus is going to come like a thief in the night. Don't put that on me. If he's going to come as a thief in the night to you, that's on you. He's not going to come as a thief in the night to me because I'm watching. I'm ready. My citizenship's in heaven. I put that verse in there. I was inspired because just this last week, uh, Lisa and I, our passports expired. So you got to get new passports. And so it's funny because you have to get pictures for your passport, right? And um, it's funny because here's this picture. And if I would have compared it to the picture from 10 years ago, I didn't look like the same person. And then it dawned on me, you know what? This is my passport to get in and out of America. But thank God, my real citizenship is in heaven. And that picture, in that picture, I look just like Jesus. <laughs> right? Do you have a citizenship in heaven? Then the Bible says that you reflect the righteousness of Christ, that it's been imparted to you. That's a good thing. Say, man, that new picture, I got all these wrinkles and all this skin. I'm growing skin. My ears are twice as long as they were 10 years ago. And my nose is getting bigger. My ears, that's, don't tell me there's not a Satan and there's not a hell. When your ears keep growing and your nose keeps growing, something's wrong. <laughs> Thank God in heaven, all that stuff's going to be, no one's going to have big noses and long ears in heaven. All the remnants of sin will be taken away. 
So here we go. When you see these things, number one, regarding a one world global government, and I now have to add and faith, mark this down. Point number one, regarding a one world global government and faith. You need to look at this. This is what's happening in our world today. First slide, guys, first picture. This is what we see happening. Note the date, 11 4 Pope calls for global unity ahead of grand imam meeting in Bahrain. What's going on? Oh, this is just the beginning. The Pope has sent out numerous invitations for the world's religions to come together and be as one. And many of the young people have adopted the song of John Lennon, Imagine. Remarkable. That's their worship song. Hello? But notice this. When kids see a world that's broken and a world that's in turmoil and in upheaval and a world that just comes out of, of a global sequestering from COVID, think of this, and a world where economics is very, very perilous right now, when someone comes along and says, let's all be one, doesn't that sound great? I mean, think about it. In heaven, we're all going to be one. But what God does in heaven forever, man is attempting to do on earth but it won't work. It's under satanic origins. Next slide. John Kerry spills the beans at UN's COP27 meeting. This just happened. When did this happen? November 10th, where it's published on the 10th. This month, they want to replace capitalism with a new economic system. That was one headline from this Vast gathering of people who are saying, we need a new world. The Bible talks about, in the last days, the ancient Roman Empire being reconstructed and reestablished. And the Bible says, listen, there'll be predominantly 10 key leaders to what John Kerry is spilling the beans about. There'll be 10, the Bible says, predominant leaders And then out of the 10, which is interesting, listen, it sounds strange, but watch this. There'll be 10, but out of the 10 will arise one who is the 11th. Meaning that he comes from obscurity. He's not considered one among the ranks. But that little one, the Bible says, rises up and he will put down the three leaders of the 10. And he will exalt himself above all, listen, that is called God. And the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2 that he will literally, now listen, he will enter the temple in Jerusalem and declare himself to be God. See, Jack, (laughs) got you, Jack. That ain't going to happen because there's no temple in Jerusalem. The seven-year tribulation period If we're starting to see indicators of it forming, not happening, forming, then we know this. Israel is not far away from having a temple rebuilt in Jerusalem. And this man you know as the Antichrist. Next, um, or is that it? Do we have more? Here we go. Uh, Shanghai uh, Corporation Organization, SCO, Are new alliances a threat to the existing world order? There's a completely new economic power base that is forming out of a world that is leaderless, a world that is now steeped in debt. Something's got to happen. Something has to happen. The Bible has anticipated all of these things in advance. And so as we go through this, I'm going to ask you guys to be uh, gracious with me because you remember that list of all those headline news? We've got so much that I'm going to have the guys because I don't want to miss uh, one that we've selected out. So guys, you throw those headlines up. I'll jump on them as we go. But we've got notes uh, to all these things. But mark this down. Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draws near, okay? So church, number one, are we looking at a European-based call for a new global government? The answer is yes. And if I would have asked this question 50 years ago, in a church, people would have thought I was nuts. Because we wouldn't have seen such things going on around us. 
What about this one? Thursday, November 17th, clergy holds multi-faith climate repentance. (laughs) You laugh because you know better, but clergy hold a multi-faith. This always always cracks me up. Whenever it's a multi-faith gathering and they pray, ain't nobody listening. Because they're all playing, they're all praying to idols, sticks, totem poles, handmade, man-made gods. It's funny. It's very it's sad, but it's funny. But here's what's pathetic: climate repentance. Did, I'm sure all of you came here today riding your bicycles, right? You didn't. You should repent. By the way, you know the bozos that said this? They like the G20 people. How do, you think the, how do you think the Pope arrived at the, out to the Mount Sinai event to call the world to repent? You think he arrived on a bicycle? No, he flew in on his jet. We are to repent regarding the climate? Repent to who? I'll tell you who. Well, excuse me, Al Gore will tell you who. It is a deity, it is a God. And that God's name, it's a female, and that God's name is Gaia. We are to repent to Gaia. You think I'm making this up? Search it. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, write it down, I don't have the verse, it just popped into my head. The Bible says in the book of Romans, Paul warned that men will forsake worshiping the God of heaven and earth, and they will worship created things, birds, and four-footed things, and man and the earth. It's happening now, church. It's happening right now. Remarkable. I want to read this quote. The pyramids were lit up to welcome the world leaders to the UN Climate Summit in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, in what almost looked like an end-of-the-world trade show. Sponsored by Coca-Cola and other big corporations, the COP27, you know, they love capitalism though, don't they? (laughs) Began as all the other climate summits with the dire warning that life on earth would end if climate change isn't stopped. Remember somebody called AOC? (laughs) Weren't we all supposed to be dead by now? The clock is ticking, warned UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. Greenhouse gas emissions keep growing. Global temperatures keep rising. Oh, I wish I could, we could add that. We could use that today. It's cold outside. We are on the highway to climate hell and, uh, with our foot still on the accelerator. That's what he said. The World Economic Forum statements regarding unity. And uh, now listen up. He's hard, to, he's hard to understand. Do you guys know what G20 is? Yeah. Yes. The, the 20 most powerful, influential international leaders come together to discuss the future of you. Okay? Who's going to control you? That's what it's all about. So why... Why did this guy show up and say this? Go ahead, roll the, roll the video. Of course, if you look at all the challenges, we can speak about the multi-crisis, an economic, a political, a social, an ecological, an institutional crisis. But actually, what we have to confront is a deep, systemic, and structural restructuring of our world. First of all, could you understand him? (laughs) Uns weinsen hevendheimen. I mean, I'm sorry, but that guy is like a villain from some show. That's Klaus Schwab, founder of the World Economic Forum. He has no business being at the G20, but here's the deal. He's saying that we have a crisis and the only way to fix the crisis is for us to become a one world. We have to restructure the world. If Paul the Apostle would have heard that clip or John in the book of Revelation, they would have went, wow! That's exactly what we were talking about. 
Absolutely remarkable. I want to give you some quotes that came out of that meeting. And all these are people of note at the meeting. Every country needs a minister of the future, says Mark Benhoff. What does that mean? By the way, it's not ministers. What's he meaning? What does he mean? When anybody from the European Union says something like this, you got to get a little spooky here. What every country needs is a minister of the future. Guess what my Bible says? There is a minister of the future coming. Listen, he's not, he's not Jesus Christ, the one that he's talking about. It's the anti instead of Christ. How about this? Economic growth doesn't mean anything unless it's inclusive growth, John Green said. You know, that's, that's a very fancy, listen up, are you guys awake? Yes. That's a very fancy, fancy way of saying socialism. Redistribution of wealth, which always leads to poverty for all. Emma Solberg said this, we will never reach climate targets if we don't create social fairness in the world. Think of that. You know what the answer is to a really good uh, weather program? Is being a socialist. David Millibrand said, the higher you, listen, <laughs> the higher you build the wall, the more you manpower the struggles. He's against borders, this guy. There should be no borders. There should be no borders. That's why we don't have any borders right now under this administration. Because they believe what this guy's talking about. You shouldn't have borders because we're trying to get to a one world government. A world without borders. Guess what? The Bible says that God is the one in the book of Daniel who has established borders and has set the boundaries of nations and all those who dwell within them. Satan doesn't want any borders. You want to know why? Because he knows that where there's no borders, there's absolute mass chaos. You're going to fall for the 15-second YouTube news, or you're going to dig down and find out what really works and what history is all about and what the Bible says regarding the future. And you'll be ready. You'll be ready. Number two, when you see these things regarding a one-world global economy... The Bible says in Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, speaking of the Antichrist, through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper. Wow. Under his rule. And he shall exalt himself in his heart. And he shall destroy many by prosperity. He will promise peace. He's the false Christ. And he'll promise prosperity. And by the way, all of you Bible students, get a load of this. People ignorantly, I don't mean that in a bad way, unintelligently or without the right teaching will say, well, the seven-year tribulation period, you go to the first three and a half years are cool. They're fine. It's the, it's, the, it's the last part. Are you kidding me? Seriously? The first three and a half years is demonic influence let loose on the planet to deceive people to worship this guy called the Antichrist, Mr. 666. And you know what precipitates it? No leader in the world to help us. We need a leader. I forget the guy's name. Some of you remember Henry Heinrich Spock. Spack said, we are in a leadership crisis. European Union, Belgium. We are in a leadership crisis. We need a leader. If it be a demon or if it be a God, we'll accept them. We need a leader. Remarkable. And the economy is key to that kind of stuff happening. Uh, I think we have something here on that. United Nations, Department of Economic and Social Affairs. World Economic Situation and Prospects for 2022. UN warns global economic recovery is losing steam. You want to know why? Because in nations where they keep hanging on to the COVID uh, uh, restrictions, those economies are dying. Go look at the economies that lifted it and threw it off and started living again. Which, by the way, Israel was major, freaked out, shut down. And Israel woke up. It took them a while. 
but they woke up and threw everything off their shoulders. And today, Israel, today, right now, of this hour, Israel is one of the, if not the strongest economy on earth right now. Israel. But look at Switzerland and other countries. They just kept plodding along. They realized, you know what? We got to keep going. Listen, economics is something that, according to the Bible, Satan is going to try to seek to use. Number three, when you see these things regarding a one world global currency, listen to this, Revelation 13, I always get a kick out of this. I was asked regarding this as well this week. And he, Antichrist, was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. I love your Bible. I love the Bible. Your Bible. 42 months is 1,260 days. Did you know that in the Bible? It's a Babylonian calendar. Your Bible from Genesis to Revelation is not 365 days. That's a Greek calendar. The Bible is based on, from cover to cover, a Babylonian calendar, which is 360 days. 42 months on a Babylonian calendar is 1,260 days. Go look in your Bible. How many times 1,260 days pops up? And it's always referring to the first and the second half of a seven-year tribulation period divided in half, which is three and a half years and three and a half years. Three and a half years is 1,262 days or 42 months. Your Bible is that accurate. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Isn't that amazing? He was granted, listen to this, uh, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. He destroys the tribulation saints, not the church. The church will not be on the earth during the tribulation period. These are tribulation saints and they have to die for their faith. God has called you to live for your faith. And authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been found, or not, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It's amazing. Verse 15 He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. This guy is going to have an image made of himself, and it's going to be animated. We know that as AI that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, watch this, so this thing is going to be able to talk. And it's an image made in honor of the Antichrist. A bot, a robot, AI, something. Watch what it can do. And verse, so as many as would not worship the image of the beast uh, to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. So this thing is going to be able to look at humanity, this AI thing that's created in the honor of the Antichrist, this machine, this transhuman thing, is going to be able to look, and it can, be, it can discern who's got the mark and who doesn't. He can scan you. Do we not, is, it, is not China, Britain, and the United States, do we not scan people? Do you know that? You know your facial recognition. China, we've known about China for years, England even before that. The U.S., we do things real sneaky. We do it. You just don't think we do it. Facial recognition, and then there's a machine that says, hey, I got one right here. The machine sets off the alarm. This thing... AI is going to be able to discern during the tribulation period who's got this particular mark and who doesn't. And all those, by the way, who have the mark have pledged their allegiance to the Antichrist. You need to know that. I said this on a post this last week. I want to say it again in case you missed this. Did you ever hear me talk during the COVID drama about don't take the shot because you're, you'll be a, it's the mark of the beast? You never heard me once say that. You want to know why? Because it was stupid. That was a stupid, stupid, stupid thing. Oh my gosh, you got the mark. You got the shot. You got the mark. There ain't no way you're going to get the mark unless you say, I, lo I love the Antichrist. He is amazing. He's awesome. I pledge allegiance to him. Uh, he's my man. 
You got to willfully do that. And if, listen, if you're not a Christian, you're going to be faced with that reality quite possibly. Christians listening to me right now, all that happens after the rapture. It has to happen after the rapture. That's how evil goes so evil. That's how Satan attempts to rule the earth is because the Holy Spirit steps aside after the church is delivered into the hands of Jesus in the atmosphere of John 14. And the whole world will be duped except those who are tribulation saints. Many of them, most of them will be Jews who will start preaching the gospel. And John said that when he saw those who came out of the great tribulation from the preaching of the 144,000 Jews, not 104,000 uh, Je Jehovah Witnesses. Sorry, if you're a Jehovah Witness, uh, sorry for you. Very, very sorry for you. Stop it. Just stop it now. Because your founder said, the first 144,000 Jehovah Witnesses, they're the special people. Really? The Bible says the 144,000 are all males, they speak Hebrew, and they're all virgins. It pays to read your Bible. He's going to require them to have this mark. Next slide, guys. Oh, wait, I guess I should finish the verse, huh? So verse 17, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark. Wow, you know what? First of all, we're getting really close right now where nobody being able to buy or sell unless we sign on to a certain social agreement with Citibank and Wells Fargo and other banks about our social beliefs. Are you LBGTQ aware? Are you sensitive? We have monitored your spending habits and we see who you support. And if you want to keep banking with us, there's certain things that you'll do and there's certain organizations you will not support. That's already in work in China, but some of you have brought to me your statements from your banks who have given you this little admonition about supporting. We understand that if you continue to bank with us, you are in full support of this corporation's uh, equality policies. Remarkable. That's not far away, people. No one will be able to buy or sell except one who has the mark, watch, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him who understands calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. So it's a human, and he has a number. It's the number 666. I find it fascinating that if you have anything, this is just fun, this is just coincidental, I'm sure. If you have anything on your body right now nearby, not on your body, but if you have anything that has a, a barcode on it, can you take a look at it? Maybe the back of your Bible, notepad, you have something... If not, look at it later. Since the creation of barcodes, which are pretty much outdated now, but barcodes, you know what I'm talking about, barcodes? Did you know that the number six on every barcode in the world, on the outside of the barcode, I wish I had a picture of it. So imagine in your mind the barcode on the far left side, okay, it's an elongated two-strand line, and that's the number six. And right smack in the middle is another elongated line, and that's the number six. And on the far right-hand side of the barcode is an elongated line, and that's the number six. Go check that out. I just want to ask you the question, why is it six? How come it's not seven? Why isn't it three? Six, six, six. I'm not saying the barcode's the mark of the Antichrist. I'm just telling you something. I think Satan's just getting you used to what's coming. I mean, look at today. We buy stuff now, we just... We just tap our card now. We just tap the card on the device. I have in my office, in my, on my, in my desk, I have an implantable chip. And you can insert that chip in your skin and I have the scanner and you can get the number right there. We use that in certain military deployments for certain covert activity. <laughs> and LA County does it to your pet. Currencies. You won't be able to buy or sell remarkably. 
without that number 666 and that number, think of it this, all around the world, people have their government identification numbers. It doesn't, mean if you're, it doesn't matter if you're Finnish or Russian. It doesn't matter if you're Peruvian or Canadian or American. You have yours. It's called a social security number. And when do you get a social security number? At birth. You're not going to get, not, everybody's not going to get 666. We're not all going to be the same number. 666 will be added to your number. It'll be a prefix. You know, like you have 909 or 808 or 714 or 494. Are you with me on your phone? Everybody's got a different phone number, but you have a different, uh, but you have the same area code, right? Think of it that way. When he comes on the scene, he's just going to say, hey, if you love me, if you think I'm the right guy, then here's how you can show your allegiance. Accept my number. And can you imagine the marketing campaign that that's going to have? Wow. We're so out of time. No, I can't. No, no. Especially, no, you got, Seth beat you guys to death last week. He went forever. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> um, he was awesome. Let's do number four. What's next Sunday? Can we pick this up next Sunday? You guys okay with that? All right, so listen, we'll do number four and then we'll end right here. When you see these things regarding confusion and misinformation, Jesus said in the last days, there's going to be a time of confusion. <laughs> in Matthew 24, verse 4 and 5, Jesus said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. People, listen up. Deception now is the rule of the day. Deception. When you ask a young person, literally, excuse me, I'd like to ask you a question, Yes. Do you go to school? Yes, I go to XYZ college. Great, can I ask you a question? Um, in what country was the Vietnam War fought? <laughs> don't laugh. D don't laugh. They don't know. When you are not informed, you are misinformed. There is no void in the head. If you don't have information that's correct, you have misinformation. And Jesus said, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, I'm the Messiah, and will deceive many. The only way that you're not going to be deceived is if you know your Bible. That's your only vaccine against Spiritual deception is having this injected into your spirit. Okay? No doubt about it. You don't know the Bible, you're a sucker. If you don't know the Bible, you're a sucker for dumb. Let's, we have a couple of things to look at here on this one. This, you know what? Maybe they're right, because when I see that, I want to throw up. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Los Angeles officials strongly recommending masks, again, as variants BQ1, BQ.1, near dominance and case rates soared. Excuse me, hello, everybody. Guess what? Ever since COVID, it's going to be something else for a politician to use to control your life. If it's not this, it's going to be something else. And the monkeypox thing didn't go over very well because they found out where it came from and that just died out because nobody wanted to be associated with it. Remember that? Oh, we got old monkeypox. Remember that? Have you forgotten? They live and thrive off of controlling you. I will not spend a dime in LA County anymore. I, I have that rule going on. I won't give that Looney Bin place a penny, and I'm sorry. Most of you live in that county. They've lost their minds. But just keep voting the way you do, I guess. Wow. Are you kidding me? No one in the world has proven that a mask can stop a virus. That's science. Oop, not supposed to say that. 
Next slide. Let's see how fast I can get to jail. This is an epidemic. You want to talk about epidemic? Actually, this is a pandemic. This is a global problem. Therapists say they can't meet high demand as anxiety and depression linger, especially among young people. You know why people are not... Listen, people, listen. Deception. You stay home because there's a... You can get sick. You stay home. Remember, stay home so you, you don't get sick. Did... While you stayed home, did you get sick? Yeah. You got sick anyway, didn't you? <laughs> did we not all have it? Some of us had it twice. <laughs> Just stay home. We'll give you money. And you don't know this, but we'll give you money so you get really lazy. And you get real dull. And you sleep in. And you, then you start playing with your games. And listen, massive parts of the young generation have been conquered by socialism. Giving people money to stay home turned them into jellyfish in the brain and in their bodies. And now they're more susceptible to illness than they ever have been. Read the studies. This last week, in response to this, Johns Hopkins University and, hang on, it's coming, Harvard, medical physicians said, we had it all wrong. We had it all wrong, that COVID would have passed through us much more quicker if we would have continued to live our lives normally like any flu season. They said we had it wrong. Now the World Health Organization said they got it wrong. The National Institute of Health said we overreacted. I'm not here to be a doctor. I'm here to tell you about deception, fear, debilitating, crippling, and it's changed your mind. And this week you're going to go to people's homes to celebrate, or maybe you're not. Are you vaccinated? You can't have turkey unless you're vaccinated. <laughs> well, the last study I read, wait a minute, you're the one serving the turkey and you're vaccinated? I don't want your turkey. <laughs> I don't want to get something. If you've been vaccinated, science shows that it can be shed upon me. There's too much thinking going on in this room right now. <laughs> Is there another slide? We have to end. I'm out of control. Yep, here. <laughs> We have, to, we have to end at this. Oh, don't worry. Listen, we got, hang on. Planned Parenthood edits fact sheet. So no heartbeat at six weeks of fetal development. Listen, Planned Parenthood ship is sinking. And we're going to make sure it sinks more and more. Church, let's stand. I still have a few things to say, but let's stand. So here's the deal. Um, I have to put the rest of my notes over here so I don't mess up second and third service. Um, um, right now, this weekend, if you know who Gina Gleason is, you should all know. She's the director of faith and public policy here, otherwise known as Real Impact. Gina and I have been taking biblical worldview positions on cultural issues since 1997 together. And so the Lord has established a reputation and we've, by God's grace, been surrounded by some pretty amazing people, including uh, some internationally known and revered attorneys on constitutional law, for example, among other things. Incredible renowned physicians when needed. Uh, policy groups. God has brought to us remarkable people. So this last election, I don't care about the parties. I'm sick of them both. I told you that before. Okay? One is completely gone and the other one is almost gone. 
because the ones that are in the almost gone party think just like the other party that's completely gone. It's all messed up. But guess what happened? You don't, I don't know if you know this yet. My phone started lighting up this weekend. And I'm not going to, I don't want to drop names, big names. Hey, what? <laughs> we need to meet. Call me. And it's like, what happened? <laughs> and so we started getting reports and data analysis from this last election. And what you're going to hear right now, you are not going to hear for a while because it won't be brought up on the news. I'm telling you right now. But we're going to, we'll make sure it comes up on the news. And wait, wait. In our, in our time, here's what happened. Gina and her team, you wonderful, precious people, you just did what you were given the opportunity to do legally. We encouraged you to exercise your republic freedom in this nation. Remember, stop using the word democracy. Stop it. There's a reason why certain people are using the word democracy. You do not want a democracy. We have a constitutional republic. There's a big difference. Know the difference. You guys exercised your constitutional freedoms, and you brought here to this church your ballots, didn't you? Yes. Guess what happened? You guys influenced, and that was part of Gene and I's work that we were doing all this last year, of encouraging other churches in California to do the same thing. The first time we did this was way back, right when the Democrats in Sacramento legalized ballot harvesting. Do you remember that? Bad law. Bad, sick, sick law. But it's the law. So when our people in Sacramento, some of them are in certain committees, said, hey, guess what? Guess what they're going to pass? They're going to pass a law. They're going to call it ballot harvesting. And it's, our, it's, the, end of, it's the end of any freedom-loving person. So when they told us, we, Gina and I instantly had the same thought. <laughs> well, if it's the law, let's use it. So what we did is that we wound up, and you know this, we wound up not only doing ballot, we don't like the word ballot harvesting, it sounds like human, like, 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 like body harvesting. We, we changed it to ballot collection. So what we did was, is what you just experienced. Well, we just found out that a whole lot of the churches took our lead on this and did the exact same thing in their communities. Watch, wait, 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 wait. And what happened was, for the third vote cycle, 18, 22, uh, 18, 20, 22, conservative pro-life candidates won, in fact, one of them, his district, the 25th, 29% of the entire eligible voter base is Republican, the other balance is Democrat. He overwhelmingly won. Congress, Mike Garcia. Why? Why? Watch what happened. God bless this effort. It swept the state. And because of it, four congressional seats were won, which won, listen, which won the House of Representatives and fired Nancy Pelosi. Listen, this is amazing. This is amazing. Now, you may like Nancy Pelosi, whatever. I'm talking just pro-life. She's pro-death. We're talking pro-life. You guys, here's what's coming. The analysis and the phone calls and the stuff, overwhelming data shows that California now has been trending for two sessions of, of two voting cycles. And last Tuesday, California is now a very light purple, <laughs> not blue anymore, not blue anymore. Watch this. Why? Go, go look and see what's out there. 
churches got involved. And so, so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what did you guys do? How did you do it? Can you do it in this state? Will you do it in this other state? Blah, 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 blah. blah. The point is this. Guess what? We gave you, the American concerned citizen, Christian voter, a clear, clean, safe vote. And you guys brought in over 13,000 legal votes and it transformed our local governments. God bless you. Church, we, we end with this. Jesus Christ is the one who died on the cross and rose again from the dead. The very same one who wrote us about these things to watch out for in the future said, I've told you these things in advance that when you see them, you will recognize that I am he. He's the Lord God Almighty. He's coming back. Be ready. If you're not sure, you need to bow your knee of your heart right now and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I want you to take my life from me and give me the life that you want for me. From this moment on, I'm going to follow you and commit your life to Jesus Christ. And then the end of time, it's going to be real sweet to wind up being on the right side of the future. Follow Jesus and no other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.